The following program is intended for mature audiences. A Democratic Republic of Sports. The Sportsocracy with ESPN Asheville hosts Tank Spencer and Jeremy Green. And welcome into the Wicked Weed Studio. I'm Tank Spencer. He's Jeremy Green. We are the Sportsocracy, the Democratic Republic of Sports, in our run up here to the NFL Draft. Remember, we are going to be live for all three days of the draft instant analysis here in the Wicked Weed Studio Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of this week. The seven round mock draft for the San Francisco 49ers. Of course, all the eyes are on the number three pick. They traded up to get to the number three pick, and they're choosing between the quarterbacks. We think it's going to be Trey Lance. The betting odds, uh, the favorite right now is Mac Jones. Uh, yeah, I think it's Trey Lance. John Lynch is all in on Trey Lance. I think he's going to get his way. This is a guy that I really like in a play-action-based offense. And that's what I think he – I think his ceiling is as high as any quarterback in this draft class. His floor is a little lower, but having Garoppolo already on the roster, you don't have to push this guy in right now. Mm -hmm. I think it's Trey Lance, and I've thought it was Trey Lance the entire time. I like Trey Lance a lot, and the fact that he didn't play a whole lot in college – and the fact that he faced, uh, you know, lesser talent in the FCS ranks, I think is a good, you know, a good thing for San Francisco. They shouldn't feel pressured to start a guy right away. Yeah, and can we stop this bullshit if he's not accurate? Uh, this is a dude that had 28 touchdowns and no interceptions the last full year he played. Oh, he was 15 to 30 in that one game that he played against. Show I don't fucking care. <laughs> stupid. It's stupid analysis and it's lazy as hell. <laughs> so Trey Lance at number three. Then at number 43 overall, you got him taking an edge rusher, Carlos Basham Jr., old Boogie from Wake Forest. Boogie. This is a guy that, uh, with us being on the Dario Radio Network, we've seen a lot of. Uh, there was not a lot to be scared of at Wake Forest. Boogie Basham was one of them. Mm -hmm. This is a guy that I think can come right in, start immediately, uh, and they don't even need him to. He can be a rotational piece with the 49ers. The biggest drawback on him is that he does have a tendency to not play as big as he is. You know, he's six, what was he, six, five, 285. He's a big boy. But there's times that he plays like he's a smaller edge rusher trying to get off the edge, use his, use his bend, and I, I think he's just a power guy. Mm. Just come in, get the quarterback, and he can do that. Unlike many players in this draft, if he had come out last year, he would have been a top 20 pick. Some of the tape this year dinged him. It, it, Wake Forest was not good. They weren't good, and I think he was out of shape at one point, and it, I'm not worried about it. Mm -hmm. This is a first-round grade to me all day yep. would be a value pick for them at, at 43. Absolutely. I'd be surprised if he fell this far in the draft, but I good for the San Francisco 49ers for picking up value here in the second round. Yeah, yeah let me tell you a fun little game. Uh, there's been about 50 people that I've been told, well, they won't be there at 50. Uh, one of them will. Uh, so that's how this works because you can't pick the same guy twice. Mm -hmm. So somebody's going to be there. Oh, yeah. There's going to be great talent fall in the middle of the second round, and I think Carlos Basham is going to be one of them. At 102 overall, Simi Fahoku, the wide receiver out of Stanford. You got Debo Samuel, got Brandon Ayuk. How does he fit in that mix? Uh, this is a developmental guy, but he is very large, and he can fly. There are some people that have compared him to DK Metcalf. I am not one of those. I think that might be what his ceiling is three years from now. Mm -hmm. He cannot catch. <laughs> he can't catch. He's very, very bad at it. And that's okay. the reason that he's going to go in the hundreds. There's some bad tape. He hasn't had a lot of, uh, I mean, I think he's only gotten 60, 62 career catches in his life. Mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of projection. This is a guy that could ultimately be the second or third best receiver in this class, or he could be out of the league in three years. Just depends on if he learns to catch. I think the Shanahan offense is a perfect place to do this. He would be a great weapon to show off that cannon that Trey Lance has. He could be a very high-end receiver, but it's a lot of projection. In the fourth round, 117 overall, Jamie and Sherwood, safety out of Auburn. Uh, there's not a lot of projection with this guy. I've seen him play a lot. He fills that Kyle Duggar, Isaiah Simmons role. This is a box safety that could be a linebacker. I think now five years ago, he would have been a full-time safety. Mm -hmm. Now at 6'2", 220, you could be a thumper hybrid, and I think he would fit in nicely with the San Francisco defense. He's very new-agey. 
He's not quite fast enough to be a safety. He's not quite big enough to be a linebacker. But with the way that defense is played in the NFL now, I think this would be a tremendous pick. I know they've been in contact with him. Uh, they've met with him on Zoom twice. Seem to be really interested. Not really a – kind of think Jimmy Ward on steroids. Okay. Because he's more of a thumper than Jimmy Ward was. Not quite as good in coverage. All right, three picks in the fifth round for the San Francisco 49ers. First of those, you got them taking a running back out of Oregon State, Jamar Jefferson. Already a pretty full stable of running backs there. Why, why would they take another one? Well, because you've only got Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson. That's about it. Tevin Coleman's gone. I don't think Jarrett McKinnon's going to make the team. Uh, and this is a guy that I really like as a pass catching back in a zone system. Mm -hmm. uh, one drop in 44 career catchable passes. Catchable just means he could get hands on it. This kid's actually got really good hands for a running back. I only like him in the in the zone scheme because I think things are going to have to be blocked for him. Not not particularly explosive, but he's got better size than people think. A lot of people see that he's only 5'10", and they go, well, he's not big enough to be a running back in the NFL. Well, he's 5'10", 220, and this is not bad weight either. This is a guy that I even think could stand to lose a few pounds and may do that when he gets to the NFL. I would really like this pick in the fifth round to the 49ers. I think he fits this scheme quite nicely. Sometimes we get tied to, uh, you know, you see a guy, you see him play, you think his style will fit a team. Uh, and I think that's, uh, that's how you feel about Shai Smith, the wide receiver out of South Carolina, uh, going to 49ers. Uh, Shai Smith touches me in a place that if a woman touched me there, I would be very happy about it. <laughs> uh, I like Shai Smith a lot. Mm -hmm. The fact he gets down to this pick blows my mind. You know, the, the, watching him on tape, he's 5'9", 190, so he's a little small. I think he's going to be earmarked as a slot guy in the NFL. The thing about him is you watch the tape at South Carolina, everybody and their brother knew where the ball was going because he was the only wide receiver on this team that had a fucking pulse, mm -hmm. and it didn't matter. In the SEC, he just goes and gets it. Targeted over 60 times three straight years. In an offense that's not predicated on throwing the ball, that's a lot. This is a guy that, I, I mean, I'm drunk on him. He was on the Chase Claypool team, the six to midnight team, whatever the hell you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Never played with a really good quarterback and was still very, very productive. This is a guy I could see getting a, being a dynamic screen receiver in the NFL because when the ball's in his hands, he is scary. 180th, you got him taking a guard out of Western Michigan, Jalen Moore. He's actually a tackle, but I see him as a uh, I see him as a guard in the NFL. I think he would be. He's one of the best zone blocking linemen in this draft. He fits this scheme. He just flat out he shouldn't be here. I'm not even saying this is a huge need for the for the 49ers. Mm -hmm. He's just a guy that should not be here. You know, the, he's too good. Raw physical tools for days. I just think he's going to struggle to be a to be a tackle in the NFL. His feet are uh, not great, and one of the best ways to cover that up is by moving him into guard. In the sixth round, out of the University of Tennessee, cornerback Bryce Thompson. The good's very good. The bad's very bad. He's not as long as San Francisco tends to like corners, but I do think they need a corner at some point in this draft. Mm -hmm. I look at Bryce Thompson as a guy that you know he held up reasonably well in the SEC on a team that was not very good. He didn't get a whole lot of help from pass rushers. He didn't get a whole lot of help up front. Uh, and he still held up pretty well. Gave up too many completions, but they tended to only be completions. So the guy that tends to keep things in front of him pretty well, that lines up in this system that San Francisco tends to run. Have you noticed that a lot of these guys fit the system? Mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco, the Jets, the Texans, there's only a few teams that I'm so worried about schematic fit. 49ers are one of them. This is a guy that fits this scheme. All right, in the seventh round at 230, safety out of USC, Talanoa Hufonga. Uh, this is a guy that can knock your brains out of your head and then pick them up and uh, uh, dance around with them. Oh, man. He hits real, real, real hard. However, uh, he's a little big for a safety. He's 6'1", 215. So he's not real mm -hmm. tall, but he's pretty thick for a safety. Mm -hmm. I don't know that he's ever going to be able to be much of a space player. I think... That there are teams that value him as a linebacker. I'm not one of them, but I think he's too small to be a linebacker, too big to be a safety. Kind of falls into that same thing again. I know they're interested in having guys like this, and this is a guy that I also know that they've been in touch with. Very good blitzer. One of the best blitzing safeties in this class. He's just another weapon that you could add to the toolbox, and San Francisco's defense gets even scarier. Biggest question for the San Francisco 49ers in the 2021 NFL Draft is who is going to win that battle for the number three overall pick? Will it be John Lynch with Trey Lance? 
Will it be as reported? Kyle Shanahan, who favors Mac Jones for that one. We will be here live on Thursday night as the decision gets made, and you'll hear our instant analysis. Check us out and subscribe to the channel. I'm Tank Spencer, and he's Jeremy Green, and we will be here all three days of the NFL Draft live in the Wicked Weed studio. WickedWeedBrewing.com. Drink different.